Hi, this is Rev Ed. Today's Back Porch devotional from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from old, from ancient days. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. Micah, of course, is one of the Old Testament prophets, and he was writing in the eighth century BC. Most of what Micah had to say was a word of judgment from the Lord on Israel because of their injustice and oppression and their greed their mistreatment of one another and their failure to walk in the ways of the Lord. So Micah was prophesying that judgment was going to come and it came in the form of the invasion by the nation of Assyria. But Micah is also full of the beautiful promise of the Lord to keep his covenant with the people of Israel. And this particular prophecy has to do with the coming of the Messiah, who as Micah tells us, was prophesied to be born in Bethlehem. And of course, we know that this was so. We remember those beautiful words from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. <clears throat> Micah is writing 700 and some odd years before the birth of Jesus. And yet here at the time of Jesus' birth, we see that through the work and the action and the intent of the Roman Emperor, this prophecy is fulfilled. Caesar Augustus was the most powerful man in the world without a doubt at that time. And he's registering all the people under his control so that he can figure out how much he can raise in taxes. This is what every empire and every ruler, every government wants to know. How much money can we squeeze out of our people? Caesar was certainly not thinking about fulfilling any prophecy that some obscure Hebrew prophet had written hundreds of years before. And yet we see that the Lord God Almighty has superintended all of these events so that they come to fulfillment exactly as his word through Micah has prophesied. You know, this ought to give us great comfort and peace as we think about the world around us. God in his providence superintends everything that is going on and everything will fulfill his plan. Some fulfill God's plan by participating with it and some just by going their own selfish way. And yet everything, everything is under the Lord's control, which means that we can take comfort no matter what's going on around us, knowing that God's hand is indeed over everything, even when his hand appears invisible to us. Caesar was just doing his own thing. He was the ruler of the world. Quirinius, the governor of Syria, is one of those earthly rulers who had no knowledge of what was going on. And Luke references both Caesar and Quirinius to remind us that while earthly rulers come and go, the Lord God Almighty rules forever and he rules over everything. So we can take hope and comfort and peace from this, knowing that as Jesus was born in Bethlehem, according to the word of God, which came to Micah 700 and some odd years before, we can take comfort in our lives today, knowing that God is superintending the events of our lives and the events of the people around us and the people over us. Now, does this mean we don't have free will? Of course not. Caesar was choosing to make all of his own choices in his own way. He didn't think about what God wanted one little bit. So we are free to participate with what God wants or not. 
And I got to tell you, it's a whole lot better to live a life that is in sync with God than it is to swim against the tide. But take hope and peace and comfort this day, knowing that God's providence surrounds you and that he has his eye on you and that the circumstances of our lives are being ordered by a God who loves us and who has promised never to let us go. This is the hope and the promise of Christmas. God's blessings be upon you this day.